The city of Atlanta says it is slowly making progress in restoring its computer networks. Hari Srinivasan explains how nine days after a cyber attack brought city services there to a virtual standstill, systems are finally coming back online. Atlanta is among the largest, but only the most recent victim of ransomware attacks, where hackers gain entry to computers, seize files, and lock out users until a ransom is paid. The FBI received more than 2,600 such complaints in 2016. A group known as SamSam is thought to be behind the Atlanta hack. They've already extorted more than a million dollars this year from some 30 organizations. The FBI advises not to pay extortion money to hackers, saying it emboldens criminals and does not guarantee that the seized data will be returned. Atlanta officials have not said whether they paid the $51,000 ransom demanded of them. For more on the scope and consequences of these modern-day shakedowns, we turn to Alan Liska, senior intelligence analyst with the security firm Recorded Future. Thanks for joining us. Put this Atlanta hack in perspective for us. How significant is it? Uh, thank you for having me, Hari. Um, it, it is actually pretty significant in terms of the scope of the damage. Uh, this is, though, one of the things that the SAM SAM group does as part of their attack structure. A lot of ransomware that we, we see is broadly distributed, so attackers going after as many targets as possible. The SAM SAM group is a little bit different. They study their targets, they take their time getting in, and then once they've accessed the network, they make sure that they deploy the ransomware in a way that does the maximum damage possible. And Atlanta is one of the biggest targets that they've hit. You know, when we think of hackers, oftentimes a stereotype by Hollywood is a teenager sitting in their basement by themselves. But when you talk about groups like this, is this one of the new faces of organized crime? Absolutely. Uh, the Sam Sam group is well organized. Uh, they're well funded. They've carried out attacks since at least December of 2015. Uh, they've brought in several million dollars over the last couple of years. So it's, I hate to use the term, but it, it's a thriving enterprise. You know, so let's talk a little bit about Atlanta. They've been pretty tight-lipped on exactly what's been affected, but what are the kinds of services, uh, if it's not Atlanta, but other cities are starting to switch from paper to digital that could fall prey to this kind of an attack? So in Atlanta right now, we see this with their court system being uh, having to switch back to paper and not being able to pay fines, uh, speeding tickets, or access other services. Uh, this happens a lot. When you have a group that plans their ransomware attack carefully, they will make sure that the, it's disruptive. Uh, we saw this last year with the attack on the San Francisco BART system, where an attacker got in and uh, installed ransomware on the fair system so that everybody who went to go buy a ticket uh, saw that the systems had been infected with ransomware. So it seems that, you know, cities and companies put up kind of firewalls to try to keep hackers from getting in kind of directly, but it seems that the human beings inside are the weak links. They get an email, they click on a link, and then all of a sudden the, the bad guys are inside the network, so to speak. In this particular case, that's not what happened, but that's the primary distribution of ransomware is through phishing emails, uh, a fake invoice, a uh, link to uh, a bad website. That, that is the primary distribution. The good news is that type of ransomware is actually on the decline. So we saw a big drop in that at the end of 2017, and that's continued into 2018. Part of that is uh, organizations are getting better at protecting themselves from that type of ransomware. This type of ransomware is a little bit different because this is targeted and this is a group that is willing to take weeks or months in order to gain access to the networks they want to get to. That is a much harder, uh, that's a much harder group to uh, protect against. We see this story because it's the city of Atlanta, but if you just go back and kind of search Google News, you're going to see that the, the Baltimore Police Department or the fire department here and the, the, the Colorado, you know, state by state, city by city, they're experiencing these attacks and they're kind of under the radar. 
This is a change in tactic that we've seen over the last uh, year or so. So ransomware used to be, again, widely distributed, widely attacked, but a lot of corporations have stepped up their security and made it much more difficult for these uh, attackers to gain access. However, hospitals, healthcare facilities, uh, government agencies, state and local governments specifically, don't have the resources to fully secure their systems the way some of these other uh, uh, companies, you know, banks and so on do. So they've been more susceptible to these ransomware attacks. Uh, they also have oftentimes a mandate to pay the ransom because either constituent services are being disrupted or patient services are being disrupted. So they tend to be more likely to pay. So they're, they're good targets because they, they will often pay. And they're, I don't want to say easy targets, but yeah. because their security teams are tend to be stretched thinner, uh, it's, there's more uh, bad guys more likely to find a mistake. All right. Alan Liska of Senior Intelligence Analyst at Recorded Future. Thanks so much. Thank you.